Alright, how y'all doing out there? This is Pete over at uh, DIY Auto School today. And I am buffing a 1964 Buick Riviera. Now, if you don't know what that car is, get on the internet and look at the pictures of it before we go any further. <music> Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie, the body shop girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. Now that you understand what kind of car we're looking at here and the one we're working on, you're going to understand what this video is about. This car is very big, it's very long, uh, it's, it's a, back in the day it would actually be a mid-size car, not a full-size car. It's a two-door hardtop, it's a collector item car, it's a 64 Buick Riviera, uh, but the real deal is, is the body features and lines on the car. Now when I say body features and lines, the way that the body is molded, built, and all the body lines that this car has. This car that you see right here is a very, very hard car to color sand and buff. Now, color sanding it is actually the easy part. But buffing it is where you really got to watch what you're doing. It's an extreme car that says, I am going to ruin the paint job. Now, I have applied three full wet coats of high quality clear coat on this car. This is a base coat clear coat. And to do a job like this properly, it has to be color sanded down to 3000. That means that we have to wet sand the car with 1500 first, then we come back with 3000, wet sand it again to get that nice mirror finish that we want and to get all the imperfections out that were caused by dust and debris, you might say, or overspray in the air from when we painted it. So what we're going to go over today is basically a couple tech tips that are very important when buffing a car like this, or possibly any car that's got sharp corners on it. Um, we're going to be concentrating on this body line here, and I'm going to take my tape, all right, to show you that body line. There's a body line right there, all right, and it goes like this. Okay, so there's one sharp line that goes like that and like that. And then we got another body line right here, all right, and this one, as you can see, it's pretty much a square line. And then down here, we got a line that runs all the way down. Now, another thing about this car is it's round. I want you to stop this video, put it on pause. I want you to look another car up. It's called a 1969 Cougar. Now, the Cougar is almost an exact body style as the Riviera. Now the reason I say that is because the Cougar body style has this round look right in here, same way, okay? So it's round instead of flat. Now on the Cougar, it comes round and then it comes out just like on the Riviera. So you're going to have these sharp corners the exact same way. And to demonstrate how to use your buffer properly when you are running into these very sharp curves, okay, here's a sharp one. You got another one here, and then another one down here. I am going to show you how to use your buffer so you don't have no problems of burning the paint off of the edge. And that is where most people mess up. It's a very simple, easy procedure. I'm going to show you how it's done, and we're going to go ahead and buff this little section right here, and then I'll get up here on this section once I'm done with this section. So before here. we go any further, what I'm using here is a double-sided wool pad. This is a 3M style. 
uh, white wool pad and these are the best buffers to use due to the fact that you can use this edge right here okay and you can use this side for sure but then if you got real contour hard to get places you can use the back side of your buffer to get inside uh, uh, you know hard to reach places that might need to be buffed uh, normally what you would do is take the double sided pad and you would flip it over to use it so that's what we're using today and then we're also using a high quality buffing compound now remember we went ahead and sanded this down to 3000 now the reason that we sand it down to 3000 and I'm going to show you what I use to do that with I use this DA sander right here this is a, a short throw DA sander now what short throw means is that it it's a, it's a real tight vibration alright so it keeps everything compact and it's basically a finished sander than a typical DA sander that you might own that is used for breaking bonded down or sanding old paint. Now what I'm using on that DA sander, I am using a 3000 grit DA pad. And what I did after I sanded it with 1000, I'm sorry, 1500, I took my DA sander, this is wet sandpaper so you need a sponge, and then I DA sanded the car using my 3000 and water to get the finish that I need. By doing that, I'm saving money and time right here I'm not using I'm using half of the compound that I usually use and I am doing the job twice as fast so you're actually uh, killing two birds with one stone with this you're actually polishing the paint and sanding it at the same time so um, if you don't have one of these and you want a nice high quality finish and you want to do it right uh, check this system out I got other videos on how to color sand and buff your vehicle uh, but this isn't one of them. This is actually how to use your buffer on sharp corners. covered the situation on how we got to the 3000 grit. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to start buffing our car. This is where most people get scared and they don't want to buff because they're afraid of burning the paint off. Now what I do when I am buffing with my compound, I go ahead and have a variable speed and I set it at 1800 RPM. The trigger is a variable speed as well. See what I'm saying? So you got two variable speed switches here. You got the trigger and you got the locking mechanism right here, which when you hold it all the way down, it will be 1800. So when I spin this buffer real slow, I want to show you which way it's turning. Do you see that? The buffer is turning in a certain direction. That means that we have got to use that as a tool for not burning our paint. And when it goes faster, you can see that it still spins the same direction it was when it was slow. So if we are working on this edge up here, and we've already got this buffed here, but we want to buff this section right here. When we buff this section, we're going to do it in a way where we won't have any problems of burning any of the clear off these edges. I'm going to go ahead and pull this tape off because the edge of that is actually on the bottom of the tape. And then I'm going to put it on the bottom of the line because I want to show you this is how you use a buffer. So remember I told you the buffer only spins one way. Okay, you can see that it's spinning toward the front of the car. So to buff this area properly on this top edge right here, we want the buffer to go this way. Because if we hit the curve at an upper angle like that, we are feathering that edge instead of going down like this. If we, were, if we brought the buffer and set it here and going down, what's going to happen? 
by this turning like that, hold on a minute. Okay, I'm sorry, I was backwards. Do you see the situation we have? That's the kind of fuck-ups that happen when you're buffing your fucking car, is that you get confused, okay? So, if our buffer is turning toward the front of the car, we want to hold our buffer on this side right here, just like that. And what that's going to do, that's going to ride that curve at a feather type buff, okay, do you see what I'm saying? And it's hitting that without burning it. If we hold our buffer at this end, then what's going to happen is that buffer is going to dig down and burn the edge of the paint off of our sharp edge. So if we're going to hold the buffer at this angle here, on the upper line, it would only be natural that this would be an opposite line flipped over, and then we would hold our buffer at this end right here. All right? That's where people get confused, and they don't know what the fuck's going on, and they fuck their car up, and then they start going, wah, 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 bitch, 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 I fucked up, I got to repaint this whole quarter panel over, because I burned through the fucking clear. You go ahead and we're going to go ahead and apply a little bit of compound in that area right there. And then I'm going to go ahead and buff this area. I'm going to show you, watch how I buff it to make a precautious situation where I won't burn through the clear. This area has been buffed, okay? It's a done situation, and it is shiny as a mirror. I didn't burn through the clear on this edge. I didn't burn through the clear on this edge because I used the rotation of the buffer to my advantage by shifting from one side on the top to one side on the bottom. One on the top, one on the bottom. Always take the direction of your buffer and use it to your advantage. All right, you see, I'm going into the edge. I'm going into the edge. If I was to buff it with this on top and that on the bottom, you see that it is hitting that curve right there, that edge, and it has a situation. You see what I'm saying? It's hitting the edge, and it could burn through the clear. And that's where you, the guy watching this video, is fucking up and, and figuring out why am I buffing my car and burning through the clear. It's because you're not using your buffer, you're not using the rotation properly, and you're not fucking paying attention. You need to wake up, get off your fucking ass, and start learning how to do this shit the proper way. So I'm going to go ahead and buff this little section right here. If I can get my wax out, okay, and pay attention to how long I buff this and, and how quick it goes by color sanding it down to 3,000. All right, I'm going to use this edge of the buffer, this side of the buffer going up, and I'm going to use this side of the buffer going down. That way I'm eliminating my usage of, of taking the buffer and burning through to the edge. you notice by the way that I'm buffing this, I'm using the edge to ride where it will not burn the paint off of the edge of the door. You see how I'm doing that? It's going away from the door jam instead of into the door jam. Yeah, right there. We're done. We're ready to keep on moving down the line. Now, this is where the tricky part is. This is where the fun starts. 
Once you learn and accomplish which side of the buffer you use for your corners, we come to a situation just like this. And this is where it can get very, very tricky by buffing little, uh, you might say, pockets or uh, 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 reveals or what have you. This is where it can get really tricky by buffing these type of situations on these big, giant, classic carbs. So we're going to go ahead and take our wax again. We're going to wax that up. And you got to pay attention. You've got to really pay attention which way your buffer is turning. Okay? Now on this top edge right here, we want the buffer to go down. We want it to go down so it will hit. But as we come around, we want it to hit in like this. And then as we go up, we want it to hit like that. So it's very important to take the buffer wheel and move your buffer as you are going around. Pay attention to as the way it's turning. And then also, uh, when you're buffing inside this little pocket here, that's where this edge gets used. I'm going to show you how it's done. Now as I'm buffing this edge here, I'm holding my buffer away where I'm only buffing half of that uh, reveal line. Um, I will do repeat my process on the bottom one here when I get to that. But right now, I'm just worried about this edge right here, and I'm only using this, I'm, I'm angling my buffer where I'm only hitting half of this edge so I don't burn the paint on that edge. Also, buffing this area where the buffer is going away from the line, so it's very important to watch. And then we're going to repeat our process down here. I'm going to make sure that my buffer is going away from this curve. And, away, and hitting this curve going this way at the same time. using a section of my buffer to buff half of this area right here so as not to hit this edge. edge of the buffer to go ahead and buff out these pockets. And I'm barely letting the buffer hit the paint due to the fact that these pockets here, you really can't rely on which way the buffer is going. You just got to be able to buff them out without burning the paint on the edges. Notice how I'm using the edge of my buffer to get that area. This area is buffed and done, ready for our finished buffing when we get to it. So remember, the next time that you buff your car out, it's very, very important to use the buffer properly. Uh, by knowing which way the buffer turns, and the way that you control your buffer to get the angle of the buffer to ride away from your curves, you're not going to burn through any more clear. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, showing you and telling you the job looks easy the way I'm doing it, but practice makes perfect. We'll see you later.
stop. Don't you know everything? Adios, amigos.